What's up, Ramblin'? You are now in the kitchen with Chef Nixon for all your fixings for the latest and greatest about BCU men's basketball. So, BCU had a game. BCU was hosting St. Joseph. How'd it go? Let's get into it. All right. So, St. Joseph, they come into this game uh, with a record of 8-8, eight eight, uh, 500. Automatically, you start thinking, okay, they're just a mediocre team. Uh, they're coming off an 11 point victory over George Washington. And uh, what I discovered was uh, both these teams have something in common. Uh, and it's very, it's not, it's not something that you can just see by looking, just looking at the team, but they have something very in common. We'll get into that a, a few minutes, a few minutes later. Um, because they're both they're both talented, but we 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 look at uh, we look at the record and it doesn't really display that. Um, but let's talk about let's talk about it now. So I didn't really see I didn't really foresee St. Saint Joe, Joseph's being a uh, competitive game for us, uh, just due to the fact that the record is a Nate. Usually, the team is a Nate. They're either not that talented or they're poorly coached. Um, and that's really not St. Joseph's. I'm not really sure what's been going on with them. Uh, I haven't been following them like that. Uh, but that's the same thing with George Washington. But I know George Washington is well coached. Um, I know that George Washington has talented players. But for some reason, it, it just not, it's just not meshing. Um, with this team, uh, St. Joseph, I think it's more of learning how to win games. Uh, and that it may seem it may seem weird to say this, but I think that they're going to be a very tough team to beat come uh, come tournament time. They have I think they have that much talent, and I don't know if they need an extra player, or if it's just they just need to tighten up on certain things to really make them pop, or maybe they have a player who's just not playing up to their ability, and they just need one more guy to really step up, and and, and they'll and there'll be some trouble in the A ten tournament. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think if you had to choose between St. Bonaventure or St. Joseph, you're going to pick St. Joseph. But don't be surprised if St. Joseph uh, upsets somebody in the tournament. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, so VCU enters this game with a record of 10-6. Uh, um, they're trying to get back in the winning side of things after two tough, tough losses to the top teams in the conference, uh, one being at St. Bank, St. Ruff, at St. Bonaventure, excuse me, and one being at home against Davidson, a game that we should have won, um, but we just struggled doing the small things. Um, so they were trying, they're trying to bounce back this game. Um, I spoke with multiple coaches um, before this game. I, I talked to to uh, to some of the GAs, some of the coaches, um, and I, I got the same report back. Uh, from everybody saying that the, the, the practices have been good leading up to this game. The players seem locked in. Um, but they also uh, they also warned me that, you know, St. Saint, Saint Joseph beat Richmond at Richmond by 30. But then they also lost to LaSalle. I mean, LaSalle. LaSalle. So um, you never know which team you're going to get. So I'm assuming that we're just going to come out there. We, we're bounced back off two losses. We're, we're trying to, you know, we're going to, Really put it on, um, but after tip, I thought I'd been lied to, man. <laughs> I thought I'd been lied to. Uh, St. Joseph uh, opened it up to an eight-zero run. Um, I know that the crowd. I could tell at the sense that the crowd was anxious for us to respond. Shoot, I was anxious uh, to see, you know, what what we had, like, like what's going on. Was it just it was just a run? Like you know, basketball always has uh, is a game of runs. Was that just a run where we? Uh, were we shell shocked? Uh, you know, you know what, what what was it? But it turned out to be just a part of the game. Um, so we came back out and we uh, we fought real hard and we ended up taking the lead briefly. Um, but then St. Joseph's um, showed showed that they're a good team. Um, even though it's hard, it's hard to different like an eight and eight record. You just you just think like, oh, we should be thumping them, but. Uh, but no, St. Joseph came out and showed that they they have talent and they're a really good team. 
Um, they came, they fought back, took the lead, and basically controlled the first half um, up until the end. Um, they uh, they shot the ball pretty well from three. Uh, Taylor Funk was one of the guys you couldn't leave open. Um, and surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, they had they had another guard, Jordan. What was his name? Jordan. What was the guy's name? Jordan Hall. Um, and that guy's a sophomore. So St. Joseph might be pretty nice uh, coming uh, for years to come. Uh, but those two guys kind of led the way with them, and they they, they had them in good shape uh, in the first half. They, they took back the lead, had a three point lead. Uh, towards the end of the half, um, VCU uh, fought back, had the ball for the closing moments. Ran a pretty good play, got a decent look at it. However, we missed um, Keyshawn Curry, who who seemed this game to be in the right place at the right time in the right moment. Um, a lot of the times, like it, this game was full of you know. We, we push the lead out. St. Joseph closes it back, push the lead out, and we had these moments where we need to make a play. It seemed that Keyshawn Curry was in the middle of that throughout the whole night. Um, so this was one of the times his name was called. Uh, he was able to fly in, uh, get a rebound, and put back. Should have been an and one possibly. Um, but we end up going into the half down one instead of three. Uh, I think that was pretty big for us. Um, it definitely was for the crowd. And, again, I have to give a shout-out to the crowd. The crowd was amazing, again, at the Stu. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's, it's appreciated by the guys. It's uh, it's appreciated by, by, the, by the alumni like me, man. Uh, we, I was, when I first got to VCU, I remember if it wasn't like a George Mason or a uh, ODU or, you know, uh, maybe even like a, not as a Kansas State James Matthew, it wasn't like a, like a, or a ranked team coming in, we didn't have uh, sellout games, or the crowd wasn't through the roof with the sound that we were, uh, excuse me, that we were uh, that we were producing. It was, I remember games where it was empty in there, um, and I say not to say empty as far as like nobody was there, but empty as a fact that comparison to where how packed uh, the stew can get. Um, now, mind you, those were back when we had the core core fans and the students um, for all the glitz and glamour that uh, that was soon to come. Um, but I remember how that was, and to see the, to see the guys nowadays, uh, or, or the present time, go through that where we weren't getting the support that we're, we're used to getting, and uh, I guess you say that the rant, that the nation wasn't wasn't as lively as, and I'm, now mind you, I know that COVID has a lot to do with that still. Um, but to see the guys go through that was kind of like, Ugh, you know what I mean? But um, these last few games, uh, we really came out. The Ramley really came out. The Nation really came out in, uh, in numbers. And uh, I'm pretty sure the guys appreciate it. I know the coaching staff appreciate it. Uh, and it just made the game a lot more lively and more fun. Um, so I, I encourage everybody to continue to do so. Um <clears throat> So coming coming out of half, uh, I was I was hopeful that we would we would come back and uh, dominate the second half like uh, like we're supposed to. I, like I, I believe that the St. Bonaventure game was, for lack of better words, BS. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I feel like we could play a, a a ton. Like we could play a lot lot better than what we did. Uh, I felt like. Our energy was was low. We came out flat. Uh, we made had a lot of mental mistakes and momentum momentum changing mistakes, which kind of took us out of the game. Um, I thought the Davidson game was a game that we should have won. Um, I think Davidson even thinks that we should have won that game. If you look at all the things like we missed nine for twenty one from at the rim, you know that's uncharacteristic for any team, especially us. Um, so. When I when I look at VCU and where I see VCU, I think that we're still top of the league. I think that we are just as good as St. Bonnie's, just as good as Davidson or anybody else. You know what I mean? We played we played Baylor, who was ranked in the, in the nation, and we played them tough. We played UConn. We we played all these teams. So I'm I'm pretty sure that we're right up there. Um, we're right up there with uh, 
through the top of, of the A-10. So I was expecting us to come out and really demonstrate that um, the second half. And I think we, we kind of did and we kind of did it. And we'll get, we'll get in that later. Uh, so starting out the second half, um, we really put on, put on our pressure that a lot of people really can't handle. Um, I remember there was a sequence where I believe Vince got a layup. They pass it in, still bucket by none. And then they pass it in, still bucket by ace. And then at this point in time, the stew was going crazy. WrestleMania was going crazy. Um, both Hulk Hogan's, <laughs> the Undertaker, Ric Flair, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, all the guys were going crazy. Shout out to Gary and those guys. Um, they bring a lot. They, they do bring a lot of energy. Um, so that was dope. And, and at this point in time, I'm, I'm expecting us to really put St. Joseph's away. I know it was early in the half and the game was full of runs. I, I do understand that. But I was really expecting us to put them away. Uh and we, eh, we were, we were like this. Great teams put it away. Arnold Henderson's playing the last five minutes, right? Um, but that wasn't the case, man. That wasn't the case. And uh, maybe I'm just a real fan of Arnold, and I want Arnold to get playing time. But uh, I just felt as if we let them off the hook. Uh, the remainder of the game, we had control of the game. Don't get me wrong. We had control. But there were times where we would just let them hang around, just hang around. Like we would do, we we would we would have a good stretch of plays, then we have a stretch of bad plays, and we just let them hang around, hang around. Now, why is that a problem? Why is that an issue? We still had control of the game. Why is that an issue? Um, because good teams, good teams, or great teams, when we play them, and we are going to play them. St. Bynes is a great team. Davis is a great team. Um, when we get to to the tournament, we're gonna be playing all great teams. So when we play teams like that, we can't allow them to stick around because when you allow teams to stick around, that's how you get beat. For instance, Davidson. Davidson is just a great example of that. We had control of the game um, coming down the stretch, but the last five minutes, because we let them hang around, they were able to go on a run. Boom, and now we lose the game that we should have won. So, and that was kind of stress. Davidson was still a little bit closer than this one, but uh, you get what I mean. Um, I, just, I just think that we should have put them away to the point where it was just out of reach. And I don't think we really did that as much as we should have or could have. Um, and I know that that can really bite you in, in the tail. Um, I know I've been a part of it um, on both sides where, like, we would have the lead at half. My, ju- my junior year, we did it all the time. We would have the lead at half. Had control of the game at the down stretch, we would just fumble the bag and end up losing the game that we should have won. Um, so, so that's that's an issue with me. Um, but we ended up pulling the game out uh, with a victory of seventy to fifty four. Um, and I got to ask about like as a coach, I know that I know Coach Rose probably said this. Um, he's happy that we won. But that's about it. When you look at this game, um, and remember, we had we I had a conversation with you guys about how when we were whooping somebody, I can't remember who it was, and how we had to play to our standard, right? And I just don't think that the St. Joseph game, we played to our standard. Starting out the game, we definitely weren't. We picked it up, and then we fell off. And then second half, we picked it back up, and then we really fell off. And it was just kind of like like this. We had to leave, but it was like this. We kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just don't think we played to our standard. And what, what do I mean by that? Let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's look at these stats. Because I just, I was looking up at the scoreboard and just keeping track of this the whole time. And I thought, I thought it was crazy. So let's look at turnovers. We had 20 turnovers. 20. And out of those those 20 turnovers, I don't think that St. Joseph's defense was 
forcing us into these turnovers. You know what I mean? I understand, like, you guys are saying Bayern Venture, they have a really good defense. They will force you in turnovers. You're passing the ball, you think it's there, and it's just not there. That's a forced turnover. Um, but this one was more so just bad decision-making and, and, and overall just sloppy play. You know what I mean? I think that, yeah, we're happy you're playing a St. Joseph's team that you can have 20 turnovers against to still win. But if you're playing to your to your style of play, if you're playing, or to, I mean, to your standard of play, if you're playing a, a top-notch team, 20 turnovers, you're going to get beat. You're going to get beat. And the rebounding match, I think we ended up winning by one. But if if you look at throughout the game, we were down on the rebounding and probably to like the last 10 minutes of, of the game. It was something like something around there. And it was just like, I mean, we won. So I, we, we won the rebound, rebound the battle, but that's just something to be conscious of. Like, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to shake that up moving forward. Uh, we got to shake it up for our next game. You know what I mean? And then we still got St. Louis. We got Richmond. Um, you know, so and then we got the A10 tournament coming up. We 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 gotta we gotta cut the, we gotta cut that out. We gotta cut that out. That that right there is gonna get you beat. That twenty turnovers will get you beat. It just so happened our defense, um, our defense was able to force them into twenty seven. Um, and if I'm their coach, I'm having them run suicide until their legs fall off. That was just just a very sloppy game. You know what I mean? And if you look at it, I think we played we played down to their level. Twenty turnovers. Just looking at it again just made me like, yeah, wow. We were really sneaking it up. Um, at least in that aspect. Um, I think overall the game was decent, but in that aspect we we really struggled. Um let's get into the stat leaders. Um Vince Williams led the way, Mr. Do It All. Had 21 points, seven rebounds, and three steals um, in a charge. He has a charge every game. I want everybody to keep track of that. He has a charge every game. That is a low-key stat, but it's a huge stat. And for your, the leader of your team to take a charge every game, the leading scorer, leading rebounder, to take a charge every game, that's something to admire. That's something to applaud because taking the charge is a split-second it's, it's, you got to think about it. You're in help side defense. You see the man coming. If it's a split second decision, if you hesitate, it's a blocking charge. If you don't go, it's a layup. So it's a split second decision whether you're going to step in and take whoever is barreling down the paint to hit you in your chest, take that impact and fall. That takes, that, that takes takes balls, um, and Vince has done it every single game, and that's something that's something that needs to be applauded. Um, that's something that a leader would do, um, and it's really good to see him do it. Uh, so again, shouts shouts out to him. Ace had a uh, Ace had a, a peculiar game. Um, he had eleven points, six assists, and seven steals. Now, that's, that is great. That's great. However, Ace had eight turnovers. Very uncharacteristic. Um, eight turnovers. Some may not have been his fault, but still, eight turnovers. Um, now, he made up for it because he had, you know, his assist, his assist to, uh, to turnover ratio was what? Uh, I don't even know. Um, but he, he had six assists. It's seven still. So he kind of made up for it. Like he turned the ball over eight times, but he was able to get it back seven of those eight. Um, and he still was able to add into it, add it, add the assist in there too. So it's something where he kind of covered, he covered his tail. Um, but again, standard. Um, he can do better. He knows he can do better. Coach Staff knows he can do better. And we all know he can do better than that. Um, and I think, and granted, I think he will too. Um, but that's something he just got, he just got to work on and improve. Um, I think some of the stuff was him for, trying to force it um, because Ace Ace kind of reminds me of, of uh, Joey when it, Joey Rodriguez when it comes to his vision. 
Um, I think Joey, one thing that him and Joey have in common was they both were risk takers with passes. I was not. I was, if you look, I didn't really go for steals that much. You know what I'm saying? I was more so, I'm going to be solid. I'm not going to take risks. I'm just going to play solid defense on you. I'm going to be here in your face throughout it all. You're not really getting by me. I'm here, da 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 That was my style of defense. And if I, and I, okay, let's compare it. The way Joey is, the way Joey and Ace are to taking risks with passes is how me and Briante are with actually going for steals. Briante is a great defender, and he would go for steals. He would risk going for steals a lot. Um, he had the, the, the foot speed and the hand speed and the limp to actually get the steals. Um, so he, when he risked it, he actually got it. Um, me, on the other hand, I just was unsure, so I just would stay solid. <laughs> so shout, shout, out, shout out to Joey and shout out to Briante. Um, so for St. Joseph, um, Taylor Funk led the way. He had 22 points and six rebounds. Um, I really thought he was killing, but when you look at his percentages, we kind of really held him in check. He just kept finding his way to the line. Um, I think it was like four for 14. That's, I mean, that's really good defense. We played on him. We just got to uh, limit, our, limit our, uh, our fouls on him. Uh, Jordan Hall had 11, seven, uh, excuse me, 11 points, seven rebounds and five assists. Um, like I said, he's a sophomore. He's about six, seven. He's going to be good by his senior year. He's going to be really good by his senior year. I think he's going to be uh, putting up uh, major numbers come, coming coming forward. So, VCU be prepared to have to guard that man. Um, now, our low-key player of the game, I kind of mentioned him earlier, uh, is Keyshawn Curry. He added 12 points and five rebounds. And it almost felt as if every point of his, even the rebounds of his, were like key moment like rebounds and points like what well, we if we don't get this they could start a run Keyshawn get a get a rebound a defense rebound or an offensive rebound um um we're having trouble scoring Keyshawn would drive hard to the paint and get to the cup um and it, it, was, it was for me it was just constant um and I gotta applaud him for that like I, I've always said it you guys should probably already know what I'm gonna say an aggressive Keyshawn Curry is a good Keyshawn Curry. And he was super aggressive on the defensive end and the rebounding and the offensive end. Um, overall, I think he was the low key player of the game, man. He did he did a lot. Don't get me wrong, Ace and Ace and uh, Vince did their thing, but I don't think we pulled that game out without Keyshawn Curry. So shout out to him. Um, now looking forward, Wednesday, eight thirty at Davidson in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think it's in Charlotte. Um, it's redemption. It's time to get redemption. Uh, like I said, Davidson game is a game we should have won. Um, we, we, I mean, when you're playing a great team, it's not going to be a huge, if it's a close game, it's not going to be a huge difference on the stats. It's not going to be a huge, uh, uh, you, you know what I'm saying, discrepancy about things. But 9 for 21 at the rim. That's a lot of points. <laughs> That's a lot of points left on the board. Um, I don't think we're going to repeat that. However, it's going to be harder to beat Davidson at home than it is at our home. I'm just going to be real with you. Um, it's going to be harder. So we're going to have to bring our A game in order to pull it out. You know what I mean? Davidson is a very well-coached team. They have height. They have length. And they have shooters all around. The defense is going to have to be A1 like it was, like it always is for the most part. You know what I mean? But offensively, we're going to have to be able to put that ball in the cup. We're going to have to. They're too good of an offensive team to just rely on our defense. Because sometimes, you know, our defense is going to be perfect, and they're going to have better offense. You know what I mean? The example of that was Ace being all over uh, number 13 in the corner, and he just rises up and drains it. You know what I mean? So sometimes the defense is going to be great, but they're going to have they're going to hit tough shots. They're that great offensively. So we are going to really have to lock in and play physical, not only on the defensive end, but on the offensive end. And our bigs are going to have to produce. We're going to force them into turnovers. We're going to play good de- good, uh, good pressing defense and good uh, half-court defense. 
but our our uh, our offense has to be producing. Um, we can't we can't afford Ace to have eight turnovers. We can't afford uh, for Vince to not be Vince, um, and we can't afford for Hassan to miss X amount of layups. We can't afford uh, uh, Levi Stocker fading away from the basket um, on his post moves. You know what I mean? We, d- we just can't afford that playing Davidson at Davidson. We're going to have to play a complete game, and I think we can, and I think we will. So, like I always say, BCU, put seat bed on, and get ready for the ride. So, until next time, peace. Oh, and one. That's the six points.